What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're actually going to be going over the subreddit Fat Logic. Now this was a video that was actually requested by a couple of you guys and it's something that I've actually seen like other YouTubers doing kind of going over subreddits that might be kind of loosely uh, related to their types of videos that they make. So I do wanna say before we you know go any further, all of these posts are coming from the subreddit fat logic so if there's more things that you want to see that are similar to this go there all of you know all of the credit belongs to them i'm not trying to take any of that i just wanted to maybe read some of the posts and and share what i thought about them so it says here at the top of the subreddit it says find out what keeps you fat and then do something about it sick of being fat shed your fat logic here. So what I've kind of gathered through looking some of the posts is that a lot of these posts are kind of just reposts from other people that are in the like fat acceptance community or the health at every size community and people just kind of repost what they've said and then they kind of share their thoughts about that. So let's just jump into it. So this is the first post right here. It says the myth is that people diet to try to be thin. The reality is most people diet to try to avoid weight stigma. We don't come into the world preferring thinness. The belief that thinness is better is not innate for any of us. We are taught that being thinner is better. We get caught in the pursuit of thinness, not because of thinness itself, but because we are taught, lied to, that thinness or the constant pursuit of thinness will protect us from weight stigma. Now this is actually something that I've noticed more and more with like the fat acceptance or health at every size community is that it's like thinness is bad it's like a bad thing to want to try and lose weight it's and it's almost it's gotten to a point now where it's no matter what the reason like even if you are really having some health concerns and really having some issues with your health because of your size trying to lose weight almost negates you from being body positive from being health at every size like you are no longer allowed to be that with a lot of these posts and a lot of the things that I've seen with health at every size there's always a an ounce of truth to it like I think that for a long time people focus way too much on getting as thin as possible and saying like the thinner you are the healthier you are I think we all know that just because you are thin that does not mean that you're healthy but we also know that if you are morbidly obese the chances of you having serious issues related to your health are going to skyrocket now this next post was actually from a very big person in the health at every size community, Stacy Tovar, and this is what it says. Imagine repeatedly being given a health plan that asks you to become something that research says you have less than a 1% chance of becoming, and you've got the medical reality of a fat person. And this is her caption. This is a trap. We are told we are failed thin people when we are actually just not thin people at all. This fundamental misdiagnosis leads to a number of issues. Our medical records are viewed through the lens of failure and non-compliance. The medical system is designed only to help one third of Americans who are thin and then ask two third of us to just, you know, become entirely different kinds of human and treats this absurd unscientific premise as good medicine. There is no room for the current medical model for a fat person to be a thriving person. When we develop Ill illness or pain, like all humans do, it confirms medical bias and the bias delays care. We then delay doctor visits because we sense we are being judged and we know we are often being denied proper care. We are asked to face this medical nightmare day, day in and day out and we blame and pathologize ourselves. This is unjust, this is wrong, this is neglect. You can begin by taking a breath, having a cry, getting mad and refusing to keep treating yourself like a failed human. Stop dieting, know that being super hungry after a lifetime of restriction doesn't necessarily mean you have an eating disorder. It, it likely means your body is working perfectly. Refuse to accept that something is fundamentally wrong with being fat. Start doing things that make you happy. Read the patient bill of rights, link in bio. Demand that doctors honor their oath to do no harm. Know that you can end an appointment at any time. Know that you can refuse to accept weight loss as a prescription for what's ailing you. Know that no matter your health status, presence of chronic illness and disability status, you deserve compassionate, excellent care because you are a precious human. Whew, all right, that was a lot of words. <laughs> So the first thing that obviously I picked up on is that it's, it's she says that it's 1% chance. So basically what she's saying there is there's 1% chance of you being able to lose weight and keep that off. And it's just funny because every time I see a statistic, it just gets lower and lower and lower. Like for a lot of times you saw 20%, then 10%, and then that 5% rule was like pretty popular for a while. Now it seems like it's less than 1%. So it's just funny that the number keeps dwindling and dwindling. I definitely do wanna say, 
I, I do feel like there are doctors and health professionals that treat people wrongly because of their size. And I've been in that situation. I remember when I was a kid, when I was in like, I think I was in 10th grade, I've told this story, mom tricked me into going to the doctor and the doctor was just really, really rude and made me feel terrible. And I never wanted to go back to the doctor again after that. So there is without a doubt bias and there are bad doctors out there. And I don't want to discredit that because I 100% agree with that statement. If you feel like you're being treated wrongly or you're not being treated correctly because of your size, you 100% should try and find the right person. But that doesn't mean that if someone says, hey, Losing weight might help this, right? Losing my weight might help this diabetes. Losing weight might help this issue you're having with your knee. Like that doesn't always mean the person is only thinking about that, but sometimes there are very obvious correlations when you are morbidly obese to health issues. And so it's like people are, they, they refuse to look at the gray area and it's always black or white. And I just don't want to do that. Like, yes, there are some doctors that are not doing the best jobs, but there also are doctors that are doing a good job. And for them to not say anything about your weight, if you're 200 pounds overweight, that's also neglect and them not doing their job. So you have to be able to take a back seat and and be able to look at it from a you know a long lens. And yes, it hurts when someone says maybe you need to lose weight if you're not ready, or it hurts, or it's like it might be frustrating. But at the same time, the truth hurts sometimes, and sometimes you just have to hear that stuff. And I've actually made videos about the girl, the woman that posted this, and I am very skeptical as to why, what her intentions are. Um, she has a very big following. She does a lot of speaking engagement. She sells a lot of books. She, she has a lot of merchandise that she's trying to sell. So for me personally, it's hard for me to take everything that she says 100% honestly, because I feel like she says things that are very, very bombastic and very big because she knows that it's going to get a response. And you know, the last louder you are, the more people that listen to you. Next post, it's okay to eat when you aren't hungry, just as it's okay to eat after you are full. If you are setting limits and rules around when you're allowed to eat and how much, it's still restriction and engaging in diet mentality. Now, again, I agree with that. Like if you wanna eat when you're not hungry, like go for it. Like, you, no one's gonna stop you. But again, like if, you're, if your goal is to try and lose weight, maybe that's not the best plan. And like setting limits and being disciplined doesn't mean that you have a disorder. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It might just mean that you're trying to get better. Like for me, I, it's just so crazy seeing this mentality of like, if anything is hard and you're pushing yourself to do it, it's like there's something wrong with that fact. Like sometimes people just want to get better and to get better you have to get in really uncomfortable situations and maybe to get better you have to deal with being hungry a little bit or not eating whenever you want to eat. That's just how it works. Like things that are hard sometimes are hard. <laughs> and this is a little poem. It says, when people accuse me of glorifying obesity, I don't run from it. I am glorifying obesity with all of my love handles, my rolls, my excess fat, I am glorious. The glory rests on my puffed cheeks and my thighs which rub together when I walk and in my stomach when it folds as I sit down. There is beauty in, in that, the grandeur of fatness. So I happily promote it. Loudly, I profess my love for fatness and fat people, confident or not, brave or not, secure or not. Fat people are glorious and obesity is worth glorifying. Now, I think that everyone should be able to love themselves and, and love who they are, and I think that is very important. Now, the, the issue with a lot of people that are in the Health at Every Size movement or you know people that would write something like this is, for them, their obesity is what defines them. And so when people are saying that you shouldn't glorify, glorify obesity, they hear that we're saying or people like that are saying you don't deserve basically to exist and so i think that that's where a lot of the pushback from the health at every size movement is like why it's coming is because people have started to identify as their size and who they are is directly related to how big they are and the amount of fat they have on them and i think that's why it's so dangerous and that's why there's so much passion in those people that are in the health at every size movement is because it's no longer just like, hey, I have some excess weight that maybe I need to lose because that's not how they see it. They see their obesity as the same as someone, you know, that might be, have a different skin color, right? Like they equate it to the same exact 
things. And that's why, I mean, I think that that's absurd. You can't really change your skin color, right? You can't change where you come from, but you can change how big you are. You can change your size. And for a lot of people doing that might actually help them live a longer life. And then I found a couple posts that have the tag sanity in front of them. So what I've I've noticed with those posts is it seems like these are things that maybe you would you would see someone like me saying or people that have lost weight. Um, so they're less um, sarcastic posts. Right here it says hard to swallow pills. Losing weight and never regaining it means you have to sustain healthy eating behaviors for the rest of your life. Now obviously I agree with that. I think that that's the that's the issue that a lot of people have when they diet is you end up doing very unhealthy things to lose the weight, and so you're no longer able to sustain those things. That's why sustainability is one of my favorite words of all time, is because if, if you're trying to lose weight and you're doing it in a way that is not healthy or sustainable, you're not going to keep that weight off. So I would 100% agree with that meme right there. <laughs> and then this post right here, it says, Sanity from an Australian fitness coach. This is exactly what we've been saying. And the picture says, worth at any size, not health at any size. And then in his caption, he says, yes, your self-worth as a human being is not and should not be governed by the weight you are when standing on a set of scales. The choice you make on how to live your life is completely up to you and no one has the right to tell you otherwise. However, it is my firm belief that while you certainly have worth at any size, that does not mean you have health at any size. The facts are very clear cut. Being overweight or obese and living a sedentary life will put you at put your health at risk and is likely to see you cut your years of your life expectancy. You may well say, good, I don't care because I love my life and I enjoy eating what I like and shouldn't be pressured into doing something I don't want to do. Again, you are correct and go right ahead living your life as you are. However, while you may not feel unwell or feel the effects of your lifestyle is having on you right now, I unfortunately have to see the devastating effects it causes on a daily basis in my practice and I would never want to see you end up this way. While the mainstream media, social fitness influencers and the like will tell you that you need to cut everything bad out of your diet and you need to be working out every day, the fact is, you don't need to change everything in order for everything to change. Please start taking your health and well-being seriously and please put me out of a job. Yes, you could continue to live your life the way you are and never suffer any life-altering or worse-ending complications. However, that is like playing Russian roulette with five bullets in the chamber and only one chance for success. I absolutely love that post. I couldn't agree more with that, you know, especially when he's talking about how Everyone wants to, you know, they, they, they feel like everyone's telling you, you need to do everything. You need to do all these things, change everything about yourself to live a healthy life. And I, I completely disagree with that. And I think that that, that, thought that that feeling that people have is the reason why so many people don't even try and now to bring up kind of like the biggest loser that is one of my biggest issues with the show is that they show these people doing these insane workouts they show these people doing this crazy stuff like losing 20 pounds in a week and people start to feel like that's what they need to do if they want to lose weight so a lot of people don't even try to lose weight because they don't feel like they can do that so instead like I want people to understand like it doesn't need to be this crazy thing at the start you can take these small steps and improve little by little by little and eventually once you look back like when I look back at where I started I was nowhere close to where I am now but I took little baby steps along the way and I was able to build what I have now and I love that he was talking about how like you may not feel unwell right now you might feel healthy right now and that's again I, I've said this before that's what you notice with a lot of the health at every size people is that they're like in their mid-20s maybe not even in their 30s yet and they're saying like oh it's it's totally fine to be morbidly obese like right now you might feel fine right at 20 years old or not even 30 years old yet but once you're 40 or 50 you're gonna feel those implications. And like, yeah, if, if you don't mind your life being severely, severely, just like cutting yourself off at the feet and feeling like you're limping through life, like, I guess that's fine if that's something that you wanna do, but we shouldn't be perpetuating and preaching out to people that it is totally fine and healthy to be morbidly obese for basically the whole duration of your life. Like th those are gonna have some serious implications and your life is going to be a lot less satisfying as it could be if you were to just lose the weight. But there you guys go, I think I'm gonna end it right there. I mean, there's obviously tons and tons of posts, uh, but I don't want this video to be forever long. I, I would love to know what you guys think about 
me doing this. I don't know. This was definitely something new for me, but someone had the idea and I thought, man, why not give it a shot? Uh, but yeah, if you stuck around to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. There was one other thing that I wanted to say. Oh yeah. Look how buff I am. Ugh. Also, real quick, I wanted to say at the end of this video, if you do enjoy when I do vlogs, I am here in Miami right now, and I'm actually vlogging pretty much every single day. Um, I'm here at Wadapalooza, it's a CrossFit event. So if you do like the vlogs, go to my second channel. I will link it down in the description, and you can check those out. Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.